Achievers Nine Bands Recording is copyright, published by Forever Grace Books Publication, a unit of Sai Grace Foundation Trust. Achievers Nine Bands IELTS Listening Tests, Practice Listening Test Seven. Turn to Section One of Practice Listening Seven. Section One. You will hear a conversation between a woman and a sheriff. The woman is there to complain about her stolen car. You have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. The conversation relating to this will be played first. Hello, I need your help. How can I help you? I want to report about my stolen car, please. Okay. I have had my car stolen. The woman has lost her car, so a car is written as an answer for the example. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello, I need your help. How can I help you? I want to report about my stolen car. Okay. I have had my car stolen. Oh, that's very sad. Have a seat and tell me the details. It was a brand new car which I had bought just fifteen days back. It was a red-coloured Jaguar. Hmm. How did it happen? It was stolen from the shopping mall's parking facility. Okay. Did you lock it? No. I'm afraid I forgot. Okay. Any specific feature? Hmm. Yes, of course. It is a custom-made car. My name is written on the steering wheel. So, only one thing that is your name is engraved on the steering wheel, right? Yeah. Was there anything in the car? Yes. That is another important part. All my documents, certificates, license, credit cards were in my bag, and the bag was on the front seat. Ah,、oh, that's terrible. And also, my shopping bags were on the back seat of the car, and some gifts for my parents. Okay, tell me the exact location where you lost your car. I had just stopped near the Nenza shopping mall to meet my friend. I was just some meters away from my car, and within a blink of an eye, it vanished. Did you have the car key? No, it was in the car as the engine was on. Ah,、oh, no. What what time did this happen? Hmm. It was six o'clock. No, actually, six twenty p.m. At this time, generally, the area is crowded. Okay. Can you give me your personal details? Yes. Sure. Now look at questions six to ten. As the talk continues, answer questions six to ten. What is your name? My name is Miranda Gallu.、Uh, can you repeat, please? Yes, M I R A N D A G A L L U. Where do you stay? Studio apartment forty-seven. Hilton Road, Florida. Hilton Road. Yeah, Studio Apartment Forty Seven. And your phone number? It is seven triple eight double six four four. Right, seven eight 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 six six four four. Yes, I would be really grateful to you if you could find my car. Yes, ma'am. I can understand your loss. It is an expensive car. Am I correct? Yes, it is very expensive.、Hmm. I want you to come to the police station tomorrow, also, so that we can follow up your case. Thank you. Hope you will find my car soon. 
That is the end of section one. You now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a radio talk by a conservation biologist about species which are becoming extinct. The special focus is on feral cats. First look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen to the recording and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Australia is being swept by a second wave of post-settlement extinctions, and the culprit is the feral cat. Cats are estimated to eat seventy-five million native animals every night, and the future for Australian fauna looks bleak. Greg Borschmann and Nadine Grotch investigated. The second great wave of extinction since European settlement is currently sweeping Australia's northern area. It's recently arrived in the Kimberley, Australia's last arc of pre-European biodiversity. Scientists now say that the main threat to the biodiversity is the feral cat. It's estimated that there are between 15 and 23 million wild cats living around continental Australia and its offshore islands. In the post decade or two, the threat posed by the feral cat has forced scientists and researchers to radically rewrite Australia's ecological history. Now look at questions sixteen to twenty. As the talk continues, answer questions sixteen to twenty. Conservation biologist Dr. John Wanarski says, "We've overlooked the feral cat until very recently, because we're still struggling to understand the Australian landscape, especially in the tropical north. It seems as if these landscapes were intact." So there were no obvious threats, he says. We knew feral cats had been in those environments for maybe a hundred years or so, so it didn't seem that there were an obvious culprit to cause such a rapid and severe decline in just the last decade or two. It wasn't until we started modelling the rates of mortality and trying to tear apart the impact of all other potential causes, including fire, weeds, feral buffalo, and things like that. That we were left really with one major culprit, and that turns out to be the cat. So why have we seen such a sudden and recent collapse in biodiversity across northern Australia? It's long been thought that cats have been in Australia for more than four hundred years. Castoffs from Dutch and Portuguese shipwrecks along the West Australian coast. Chris Johnson, professor of zoology at the University of Tasmania, says. We now know that's not true. It's now quite clear the cats are a recent arrival. They came in with the British from about the 1800s onwards, but established very quickly over all of the continent. There is some evidence, and again, we are only just coming to grips with this, that a lot of species disappeared very early in the history of the colonisation of Australia by the British. There are mammal species that have only just been described, and we realise that they must have been abundant two hundred years ago. 
but then vanished. So what caused them to vanish? The leading researchers feel that the cause, they think, is the feral cat. Scientists thought for many years that the original extinction wave caused by white settlement had petered out in the 1960s, more or less stopping at Australia's tropical margins. That belief has recently been shattered. That is the end of Section 2. You now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. In this section, you will listen to an interview with Al Pacino, who has perfected his own masterful blend of intensity, coolness and control on the stage and screen for over four years. The interview is conducted by a famous TV presenter, Julian Schnobel. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Listen to the conversation and answer questions 21 to 23. Hey, Al Pacino, welcome to our studio. Before we start, let's have a cup of coffee. Is that coffee fresh enough? Is it mine? Don't care if it's fresh or not. Pour some of the coffee out of the other cup right there. That reminds me of your movie, The Godfather, when Clemenza is showing you how he makes his spaghetti sauce. And he says... You throw in your meatballs, you throw in your sausage, a pinch sugar, and that's my trick. A little sugar's the Sicilian way. Where are you from originally? I was born in Manhattan. I was raised in East Harlem in my early years, and then we moved to the South Bronx. What did your dad do? My dad was in the Army, World War II. He got his college education from the Army. After World War II, he became an insurance salesman. Really, I didn't know my dad very well. He and my mother split up after the war. I was raised by my maternal grandmother and grandfather, mother. <laughs> it's so funny to talk about this. You don't know these things yet. The only thing that I know about you is what I've seen on the screen. But there's a difference between on-screen and off-screen. Now look at questions 24 to 30. As the talk continues, answer questions 24 to 30. Of course, that's what we're trying to find out here. What makes Al Pacino tick? So why do you do acting? It's necessary to do it. Why I am here and why I started to do this is because of the kind of things that were around when I was at an age when they impressed me. I was impressed by the experimental theatre of the living theatre in the early 60s and by the open theatre, and I was impressed by early Circle in the Square days. I was part of those troops who would watch plays played by actors instead of buying a cappuccino and a piece of pastry. I did children's theatre. How was your experience when you used to go for auditions? When I was younger, I would go to auditions to have the opportunity to audition, which would mean another chance to get up there and try out my stuff, or try out what I had learned and seen how it worked with an audience, because where are you going to get an audience? Sometimes the only way you can get an audience is at an audition. I'd never expect to get the role, of course. Do actors get a role in movies easily? I don't think actors should ever expect to get a role, because the disappointment is too great. You've got to think of things as an opportunity. An audition is an opportunity to have an audience. 
Now that you've had a few roles, I'm sure auditioning is less satisfying for you. As you get older, auditioning becomes harrowing and difficult. Why did you even want to be in movies? Actually, I studied theatre at a very young age and did it for many years. When one is young, everyone wants a bigger platform, bigger work where one can get more exposure and greater opportunity. Theatre gave me the same type of roles and limited money. But when you are grown up, the things don't go like that. I started dreaming of myself in movies, as it has been a bigger fan club and huge money making. Money is important for you. When I was young, I fell in love with whatever happened, you know, with that kind of world. Once I fell in love with acting, that was it. It no longer mattered whether I made any money at it or not. Do you want to go back to theatre? Well, I like the theatre because theatre is where I started. I've now come to a point where I understand movies like the way I understand theatre. Theatre for me, at one point, was a lifestyle too. I don't know anything about your past. Maybe I'm not reading enough, but I suspect it's because you're an extremely private guy. Maybe I got into the habit of not stepping out of it because it worked for me before. I enjoy the company of people. Sometimes I'm separated from them by my work. I go off to work, and that can last a long time, especially in the movies when you're out of touch for seven or eight months. And you come back, and the rhythms have changed. People are no longer together, and and things like that. What encourages you? When you see people who have endured and have come through, who still have that kind of spirit left, like the survivors, then there's something encouraging about that. Thank you for sharing of your life. That is the end of section three. You now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear an extract from a talk given by a member of a zoo and an aquarium association who is telling about the development, maintenance, and funding of Australia Zoo. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to thirty-five. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to thirty-five. Australia Zoo is a hundred-acre zoo located in the Australian state of Queensland on the Sunshine Coast near Bower Glass House Mountains. It is a member of the Zoo and Aquarium Association (ZAA) and is owned by Terry Irwin, whose wildlife documentary series *The Crocodile Hunter* made the zoo a popular tourist attraction. The zoo is run by director Wes Menian. Australia Zoo won the Australian Tourism Award for 2003 and 2004 in the category Major Tourist Attraction in 2004. The Australian Animal Hospital was opened next to the zoo to help with animal care and rehabilitation. More recently, the zoo was a finalist in two categories for the 2010 Queensland Tourism Awards. Visitors see a wide variety of birds, mammals, and reptiles, and can view crocodile feedings. Hand feed elephants and have hands-on animal encounters. Now look at questions thirty-six to forty. Now listen to the second half of the recording and answer questions thirty-six to forty. Australia Zoo was opened by Bob and Lynn Irwin on the third of June, nineteen seventy, under the name Burwa Reptile Park. 
Bob is a world-renowned herpetologist who is regarded as a pioneer in the keeping and breeding of reptiles, while Lynn was one of the first to care for and rehabilitate sick and injured wildlife in southeast Queensland. Bob and Lynn passed on their love and respect for wildlife to their three children, Joy, Steve and Mandy. In 1982, the park was renamed the Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park and the area was doubled with the purchase of another four acres. In 1987, the Crocodile Environmental Park was opened in an effort to aid saltwater crocodile protection. By the 1990s, the Crocodile Environmental Park had become very popular and was seen as unique for its display of crocodile feeding within the park. The area was mainly used to house adult saltwater crocodiles that had been captured and relocated from the wild. In 2007, the zoo and the government of Queensland made a land deal involving giving a parcel of land from the Burwa State Forest to Australia Zoo in return for land near Peachester State Forest, which was transferred to the government for forestry. The swamp permitted the development of an open-range safari attraction, allowing the zoo to expand to a world-class standard. In 2008, a new $5 million animal hospital, claimed to be the largest wildlife hospital in the world, opened next to the packing shed. The new 1,300 square metre, around 14,000 square feet facility, is built of mud brick and hay. It contains two operating theatres with viewing areas for student veterinarians, two treatment rooms, intensive care units for mammals, birds and reptiles, a CAT scan pharmacy, nursery and waiting room. A conference room in the building will be rented out to help generate operating funds. That is the end of section 4. Now you have some time to check your answers. That is the end of practice listening test 7.